Hi everyone. Today in this video, we are going to discuss vadinafil. What is the mechanism, side effects, clinical uses, and contraindications of vadinafil? What is the structure of vadinafil? Vadinafil is having a structure like this. This structure is having a phenyl ring which is attached with a sulfonamide, but this sulfonamide is converted to a heterocyclic ring system. So this is nothing but the piperazine. So vadinafil is a modified benzene sulfonamide with a piperazine structure. And we can also observe another heterocyclic ring system here. And this is a fused ring system formed by triazine and imidazole. So here the imidazole ring system is fused with the triazine by first and fifth portions. So here we can represent this as imidazole 51 f 124 triazine. In this way imidazole is attached with the triazine by fifth and first portion to the F side of the triazine. So this is the structure of the vadinafil. Now let us see how this vadinafil acts. How it acts? Vadinafil is one of the drugs which is going to inhibit the phosphodiesterase enzyme. But we can find so many types of phosphodiesterase enzymes in our physiological system. This vadinafil is highly selected for the inhibition of the phosphodiesterase type 5 enzyme. And apart from this, it can also inhibit other enzymes like phosphodiesterase type 1, 6, 11. But this drug shows the majority of action on the phosphodiesterase type 5 which is rich in the corpus cavernosa. So now this vadinafil inhibits the phosphodiesterase type 5 enzyme within the corpus cavernosa. Thereby it produces a relaxation of the smooth muscle. So nitric oxide is one of the important mediators which is responsible for the relaxation of the corpus cavernosa. This relaxation is important for the erection of the erectile tissue. A flaccid erectile tissue is less filled with the blood vessels and corpus cavernosa is not relaxed. But when this nitric oxide is going to be released, it produces a relaxation of the corpus cavernosum which results in the increased filling of the blood into the arterioles of the corpus cavernosa which results in the erection of the penis. But the release of the nitric oxide is mediated by neuronal stimulation. Both neurons as well as the endothelial cells can release the nitric oxide into the corpus cavernosa which produce the relaxation of the smooth muscle resulting in the erection of the erectile tissue. In this way, nitric oxide plays an important role in the erection. Now let us see how this vadinafil acts at this position. So all we have seen that in the corpus cavernosum nitric oxide is going to be released through the neurons as well as endothelial cells. So from the neurons one of the important precursors for the nitric oxide is the L-arginine. L-arginine can be converted into nitric oxide by one of the enzyme NOS, nitric oxide synthase enzyme. Since this enzyme is responsible for the synthesis of the nitric oxide within the neurons it is called as NNOS that is neuronal nitric oxide synthase enzyme. So on neuronal stimulation nitric oxide is going to be synthesized which is going to be released in the corpus cavernosum. Now the nitric oxide is present within this smooth muscle. And endothelial cells can also release the nitric oxide. In this way nitric oxide can be released into the smooth muscle. Now the release of nitric oxide can stimulate the one of the important uh, system GC, Garnell cyclase system. This garnel cyclase when it is going to be activated it converts the GTP into cyclic GMP. So here the cyclic GMP is the important secondary messenger which can produce the relaxation of the smooth muscle. This cyclic GMP just like the cyclic AMP it can stimulate the one of the protein kinases protein kinase G. These protein kinases are the phosphorylating enzymes which are going to inhibit the inward going calcium channels. So calcium is not going to be entered into the corpus cavernosum. At the same time cyclic GMP can also inactivate the MLCK myosin light chain kinases. So by these two mechanisms cyclic GMP can produce the relaxation. But the action of the cyclic GMP is controlled by its metabolism. So within the smooth muscle phosphodiesterase enzymes are present and among them phosphodiesterase type 5 is more abundant. So cyclic GMP can be converted into GMP by these phosphodiesterase type 5 enzymes. Now here vadinafil can inhibit the phosphodiesterase type 5 enzyme thereby it can increase the cyclic GMP levels within the corpus cavernosum which results in the relaxation of the corpus cavernosum as well as relaxation of the arterioles which leads to the erection of the erectile tissue. In this way vadinafil can increase the erection by relaxation of the corpus cavernosum as well as the arterioles of the corpus cavernosum. What are the side effects? The main side effects are headache, flushing, dizziness and here you can observe that these three side effects are also with the vasodilatation. How this vadinafil can produce a vasodilatation? Because the phosphodiesterase enzymes are responsible for the metabolism of the cyclic AMP as well as cyclic GMP. When our cyclic AMP or cyclic GMP levels are going to be increased within the vascular smooth muscle, they, they produce the relaxation resulting in the vasodilatation. 
As already we have discussed, vadenafil is having the more activity on the phosphodiesterase type 5 enzyme, but along with the inhibition on this enzyme, it can also inhibit the other types of phosphodiesterases, thereby it can produce the vasodilatation. So, vasodilatory side effects are the important side effects of the vadenafil. Similarly, we can observe other side effects like the stuffy nose, dyspepsia, indigestion, as well as flu-like symptoms can be observed in the patients. And another important but a rare side effect observed with the vadenafil is the optic neuropathy. This drug can produce some loss of vision because of the optic neuropathy, which may be attributed to inhibition on the phosphodiesterase type 6 enzyme. But this side effect is not observed in all the patients. At a high dose for a prolonged period, this side effect may be observed. What are the precautions? So when this drug is going to be taken, what are the precautions that have to be considered? The first one is the use of alpha blockers. Alpha blockers produce the one of the side effects, postural hypotension and uh, vadenafil can also produce the hypotension. So when the alpha blockers are used along with the vadenafil, there may be an increased risk of the hypotension which produce a syncope and fainting in the patients. That's why whenever the alpha blockers are given along with the vadenafil, care should be taken in order to prevent the severe hypotension. And second important precaution is acute prolongation disorders. In the patients who are having either congenital QT prolongation or acquired QT prolongation disorders, in such patients, vadenafil should be carefully given because it can produce few of the cardiovascular disorders and it can increase the QT interval in susceptible patients. Third one is the hepatic impairment. Because this drug is going to be eliminated through the cytochrome P450 system, in the patients having the hepatic impairment, the dose should be somewhat reduced and a low dose of the vadenafil should be given in order to prevent the toxic symptoms. What are the contraindications? The main contraindications is use of the organic nitrates. Organic nitrates like the nitroglycerin and isosorbate dinitrate and isosorbate mononitrate, all these are the drugs used as anti anginal agents. They are vasodilators. They release the nitric oxide which produces the vasodilatation. On the other hand, vadenafil can also produce a vasodilatation by increase the cyclic GMP. So when the cyclic GMP levels increases, it produces a vasodilatation. So both vadenafil as well as uh, organic nitrate produce a vasodilatation. So when this combination is used, they can produce a severe hypotension, which may produce the coma and death of the patient. That's why organic nitrates are strictly contraindicated with the vadenafil. Similarly, another contraindication is the hypersensitivity. So if this drug is going to produce any hypersensitive reactions in the patient, then this drug is strictly contraindicated. Drug interactions. Vadenafil is mainly metabolized within the hepatic system by cytochrome P450 enzymes. And among these, CYP3A4 and 3A5 are the major metabolic enzymes. And it is also metabolized by CYP2C9. And since vadenafil is going to be eliminated through the hepatic system, so enzyme inhibitors like the erythromycin, clarithromycin, ketoconazole, Ritonavir and so many types of drugs should be carefully given because they are going to inhibit the metabolism of the vadenafil, which can elevate the levels of this drug in the plasma, leading to few of the toxic reactions. How it is given? This drug is available as a tablet form at different doses like 2.5, 5mg, 10mg and 20mg. But recommended dose of the vadenafil is 10mg one time. And importantly, this drug should be given 30 minutes before the intercourse because the maximum concentration of the drug is achieved between the 30 to 60 minutes. And according to the pharmacological effects, the dose may be either increased or decreased. If the dose is uh, insufficient, it can be increased up to the 20 mg maximum dose. Otherwise, it can be decreased to a 5 mg dose in few of the patients who are having the hepatic impairment or any other conditions. Similarly, for the patients who are having the age greater than 65, this drug should be used at a low dose. And the starting dose is recommended at the 5 mg 30 minutes before the intercourse. So that's about the vadenafil. Vadenafil is a phosphodiesterase type 5 inhibitor which acts on the corpus cavernosa to increase the cyclic GMP levels. Thereby it produces a relaxation of the smooth muscle as well as relaxation of the arterioles resulting in the erection of the erectile tissue. That's why this drug is used in the treatment of erectile dysfunction. But this drug produces few of the vasodilatory side effects like the headache, flushing and dizziness. This drug is strictly contracted with the organic nitrates as they produce a severe hypotension and any hypersensitive reactions are produced. Again, this drug is contraindicated. And this drug should be carefully given with the alpha blockers which produce some postural hypotension and in the patients who are having hepatic impairment as well as QT interval prolongation, this drug should be carefully given.
Vadnafil is available at the different strengths from 2.5 to the 20 mg. The initial recommended dose is 10 mg 30 minutes before the intercourse, but the dose may be adjusted according to the situation. In the geriatric patients, age greater than 65, this drug should be started at a low dose at 5 mg. So that's about the Vadinafil. Hope you have enjoyed this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel, share this video with your friends, post your comments in the comment box. Thank you for watching this video.